Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. St. John the Baptist, predestined, elected, chosen by God to be a forerunner for the Messiah. John the Baptist, who went before the Lord to prepare his way. John the Baptist, Elijah, sent by God, as Malachi foretold, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and children to their fathers. John the Baptist, who preached, who preached a baptism of repentance into the forgiveness of sins. John the Baptist, who even Herod feared as a righteous and holy man. John the Baptist, who gave his testimony, his witness, in Greek his martyria, which is also where we get the word martyr. And he was martyred for his witness to Christ. The beheading of St. John the Baptist for us then is a stark reminder of the cost of following Jesus. As exceptional as John the Baptist was, he was not the exception. Our Lord tells his disciples, and he tells us, to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and to follow. So we should not be surprised by the suffering we face in this world or the suffering we will face. For the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is no surprise to us. And such suffering in this world is twofold. First, is that suffering we endure at the hands of a sinful and evil world. But second, and maybe closer to home, is that suffering we endure when we are put at odds with our own sinful flesh. It's not a pleasant picture to ponder. Think of it, the pride and the fear of Herod that caused him to behead the servant of God. Oh, it's a witness. It's a testimony of what we must bear for the sake of Christ, for his word. His word will always be hated and rejected by the evils of this world. So what then is your place in all of this? Is the fate of John the Baptist ours? Well, to answer that question, you must also answer another question. Are men still evil? Do people desire to hear a call to repentance? And to get the answer to that question, you don't have to look at the evening news. You don't have to follow every breaking minute of the story of the attempted assassination of former President Trump. Although many of you probably did last night. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is look in the mirror. Do you? Do you desire to hear the call to repentance? Your call to repentance? Do you long to hear that proclaimed from God's holy word, calling your sin, sin, and calling you to turn away from it? Now, if we're being honest with ourselves, the answer is no, no, we don't. We are always fighting it, fighting against the Word with our excuses and our self-justifications. In the stubbornness of our flesh, we just run to cover ourselves with fig leaves. And the world is the same. And yet we are called by God to remain faithful, to be steadfast in the Word of God, even at the threat of rejection and sword, even as we are called to contrition and repentance and by God's grace to die to sin 
and rise to a newness of life. So in that new life, we speak the truth and, and we love those around us. God's word of law and gospel is spoken in truth and in love. That same word that is true for us is true for others. Make no mistake about it. The world will hate you for this. It will be tough on you. And so will your old Adam. Your own sinful flesh will be tough on you. But so you are called, and so you speak. Pastors, yes, of course. As preachers of the Word, but not just pastors. So too you, Christians all, are called into the various stations and vocations of your life to speak this Word. And you are not disqualified from the call to remain faithful, from taking up your cross and following our Lord even into suffering, even into death, even as we all must die to sin ourselves and to live in Christ. So what should you expect for yourselves in all of this? Well, St. Paul outlines it for us in his letter to the Ephesians. He calls you blessed. Blessed? Yes, you are blessed. Even in the midst of your own struggles against your sinful flesh, you are blessed. You are blessed because you are chosen. You are chosen by God, like St. John the Baptist, chosen to bear His name in your lives, baptized into Christ's death and resurrection. You are even predestined, chosen by God to be His child and His heir. The promised inheritance of all that is His is yours. So what if the world would kill you for the name that you bear or for the witness that you give? Or perhaps even worse, if you would be ostracized or ridiculed or spurned or scorned or beaten up or beaten down from within or from without. So be it. For the student is not greater than, its, than his teacher, and your teacher ultimately is not John the Baptist, but the one who came after him. The Christ. For where John goes, Jesus will follow, enduring cross and shame, going into suffering and death, and giving his life so you could have life, buying you back from sin and death and the power of the devil. For through the blood of Christ, you are redeemed, you are bought back, you are forgiven your trespasses. Forgiven for all the times that you've turned from your God. All the times that you were less than faithful to His Word. To hearing it and to confessing it. You are forgiven. You are forgiven all of your sins. By the blood of Christ shed for you in your place. For He died your death and rose from the dead to new life. And that new life is now yours. For where John goes, Jesus will follow. And where Jesus goes, His disciples will follow. And just as the disciples of John took His body and laid it in a tomb in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of the dead, so the disciples of Jesus took His body from the cross and laid it in a tomb and three days later, the Lord rose again, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good, you remembered. And where Jesus goes, you will follow. You will have troubles and sorrows in this world, to be sure, no doubt, I promise you. 
But Christ has overcome the world. This does not mean you will not die. You will. But Christ has overcome even death. And that puts all of your troubles, all of the persecutions and trials that you will face, even the struggles that you have with your own sinful flesh, into perspective. Shining on those struggles in darkness, the very light of the life that is the resurrection. So, what can the world do to you? Through your baptism into Christ, you were sealed. You were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit for life and salvation. You have the guarantee that the inheritance which surpasses all of your present circumstances is yours. You, you have the very stamp of God's approval that He has named you with His name and washed you in His water and marked you with His cross both on your forehead and on your heart for you are redeemed by Christ the crucified. And even now, He gives you His very body and blood to eat and to drink that you may have His life in you. That same life which is your salvation. For where John the Baptist goes, Jesus will follow. But our Lord went into His suffering and His death for you. That you would be blessed. That you would be forgiven, redeemed, called a child of God, called by His own name. And so you are for Jesus' sake. And where Jesus has gone, you will follow into eternal life, into the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Thanks be to God.